Hi, my name's Kathy Millett, and for the next few weeks, we're looking at culverts. Why culverts, you might ask? Well, culverts are very small, little mini dioramas almost, and you can use them to show off some really nice modeling techniques. They fit on so many layouts because Railways did one thing incredibly well, and that was drainage, because they didn't want their railways flooded. So they're all over the place, they're under railways, they're under roads, you find them through city centres where streams have been sort of shoved underneath the buildings and hidden away. Um, I used to play in a stream at the bottom of the road, and it's gone now, it's just a grassy field, and presumably a pipe, and then a culvert. So they are useful in all sorts of positions and situations, in dioramas and layouts. So looking at the real world as normal, well, culverts are easy to find, you can wander around anywhere. These are from my local park or just in my local village and they're great fun um, to go and explore. I took my iPhone, scrambled down a few muddy banks and got these snaps and it gives you an idea of what things look like in the real world and it's much easier to model from a photo than from your imagination and make things look real. So the first thing I did with the culverts was, I mean, I, these are HO scale, you can get N as well, and they're Woodland Scenics Hydrocal culverts. And I think you could use it in a larger scale if you wanted as a smaller culvert, or you could make your own quite easily. And I glued these together mm, years ago. Um, my modelling skills have probably improved a little bit since then. Maybe not a lot. And what I'm looking for now is, I don't like these gaps. I just find this gap here drives me mad. It's the kind of thing that bugs me. It's like buildings that float in mid-air above layouts and you can see this thick black line. Shove some tea leaves or plasticine down there and they look so much better because they're bedded in and the eye goes, the eye doesn't hit the black line and stop. Now at the moment my eye hits this black line and stops but I don't want to lose the texture that is there. There are some fine sort of almost like stone-like lines put in, which as these are concrete, it's probably actually shuttering lines where they use the planks to stop them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually put some plastic putty on just in those gaps. And I, I probably, and this is um, Deluxe Materials Perfect Plastic Putty. There's loads of things you could use for this. I like their plastic putty. I've found it to be really good. It's very easy to use and it's also water soluble, which makes it much easier. So you can put it on with a cocktail stick and just put it into the gap. And that's certainly one technique. And then I find it very hard um, if you put masking tape, especially if you're doing bricks or something, and you put masking tape to either side, it'll stop it spreading, which can be a real, a real drag. But the other thing that I'll often do, just because it's an easy way of dealing with it, is to just get a paintbrush and a little bit of water and just to, to smooth it out, because it is water soluble with that. And it just, I don't know, I just think it works very easily then. And it's filled the gap. Now it might shrink a little bit as it dries and I might do that a couple of times. Might over, might not put enough in the top there to start with. But it's certainly an easy way to, to smooth it out. So, There we go. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna carry on and do that and all of the rest of them. So whilst I'm waiting for this to dry and before I paint it, I wanna think about what I'm putting inside the culvert. Now I could just do this concrete and put black straight behind, but I want it to go a little bit further back. So there's a little feeling of pipe. And I, I thought about rolling card, I did try it, rolling card or styrene or foil. But the trouble is you end up with a kink where it joins because it just never looks quite right. So plan B was to go down the local DIY store, being Q in my case, and look for plumbing fittings because 15 mil, and this is normally 15 mil, is a common plumbing size. I didn't want to buy a huge piece and cut it up. I did actually used to have some and I think I got rid of most of it. So I probably could have done that but I was being lazy. And the easiest way to make things look like they've got depth and it isn't a problem is actually to make them fade by a bend. So this has got a bend in it. Hmm. Now these are normally 15 mil and it almost fits, but not quite. So I'm just going to, from the back, just widen them out a bit in some places 
to get this pipe in. I'm going to make sure I don't change the front much because I'm not that fussed. So you could have them with just the concrete and I will do one like that. But I wanted to see what it'd be like if they had an inset pipe. And if you look at prototype photos, there's a mix. A lot of the modern ones will have a pipe in. Some of the older ones may not. Really depends on your area. So there we go, it didn't take much. Now I've got a pipe that I can just put out a little bit and get a different bit of variety on my culvert. So there we go. I'm gonna make sure all of these that it'll fit in case I choose to go down that route. So my next job will be to spray paint these in black because any pipe that would be fitted, I think would be black. Um, if it's concrete, I can paint it up. Um, but in the meanwhile, I want this to be black so that it doesn't, um, it, it looks dark inside as well as outside because you want that feeling of depth. And whilst I might paint the, the near end as if there's light falling on it, I'll make sure the back end is certainly very dark. So I've gone out to the garage and I've got a little um, air spray booth out there. And I, I would definitely recommend if you are spray painting to spray booth things or to do it outside because those noxious fumes are fairly deadly. I'm spraying them with car paint, it's black car paint, and it is cellulose thinner, so it does pong a bit if you don't, don't have your spray booth going. So I'm spraying one end and then the other so that it's all covered in the black. So whichever angle you look at, you don't see any copper. So that's gonna take a little bit of time and they'll push back through here in a bit. So in the meanwhile, I'm gonna get on with painting these. Now that my, um, my thing has dried, the, the putty, and it's worth saying, I know a lot of people who are model railroaders who are listening to this will use flow quill or poly scale or, or some modeling railroad color. I don't use them at all because I tend to use military paints. They're much easier for me to get hold of. I can pop into my local hobby craft and get them online on um, Amazon. And so these ones I got at Hobbycraft a couple of weeks ago, I popped in. I always pick up about 20 colors that I don't need. So this time I was quite restricted, I only got six colors, but I got flat earth, khaki, bit of green in there. And then um, wooden deck tan, which is actually, um, I quite like it as a, a, a quite a warm concrete color. It's probably a little bit warm, which is why I've also got the um, flat earth. And I'm gonna put these on as washes. So we should be shaking these while talking to you. Um, thankfully, when you first get them, they're fairly easy to get off. Now I want to make this a little bit thinner. So I've got some Tamiya acrylic thinner. I did used to buy it in these little ones. Um, I've now got the huge, huge, um, huge sort of um, jars that you can get of it. And I'm just gonna put it, this is my business card, and I'm only gonna put a dab on, you don't actually need that much. And I'm gonna use it as washes across here. So let's just go, there we go. So that's just gonna thin it down. You can see that's it's very thin, um, so that it'll, it'll flow nicely. I'm just gonna put it on. It's already got a lot of color on, so it's not like I need to do much other than just um, let it settle into all of these bumps and crumps. I mean, I don't dislike the colour that's here, it's nice and cool, and I think sometimes we can make our concrete a bit too warm. Um, it does tend to cool a bit with age, and it can also make it a bit too dark. It is quite light as well. So, find some way of holding it without. Um, I'm going to put quite a few layers on, and I might get some more colours out in a minute. I obviously sprayed this black first originally, you can tell, because there's a bit of a black vibe underneath going on, which means that my shadows are all black. So there we go, quite warm, probably too warm. And um, there we go, so I'm just gonna carry on. I'm gonna do one of these and show you each one. So there's that to me, a color. So this is khaki. layer will be enamels and these are MIG washes. I love these, I've got to admit, I use them far too much. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna put my favorite one on which is neutral. That's a new bottle, this is my old bottle. The old bottle's almost out as you can hear. So I use that when I want something a bit thicker. And this one, what I find is I never mix them as thoroughly as they're supposed to be. So they're a lot more thin. Um, I mean, they, they do take a long time to mix. So I'm just gonna ramble whilst I shake this. But the idea of them is they settle into all these grooves and they add layers and layers and layers and you can't beat those layers. 
And um, I've been looking at my natural, um, my actual real life prototype photos. And the one thing the Woodland Scenics don't have, which is why I'm going to do the inserts of some description, is in reality, there's a concrete pipe in most of these. Sometimes it could be a metal pipe and I'll do that on one of them. But in most cases, it's a concrete pipe. So I've got to go back and make sure that these tie into that when, when I put it in. Now, if you're going to um, put this up against a wall and you don't want to have a huge pipe sticking out the back, I made some of these to display them on and you could just literally put it up right against the back like that. See, I said I would waffle whilst I was shaking, so still shaking. That's probably enough, actually. Um, so this is an enamel. It's very, um, it's very good because it flows easily. So if you just run it along the edge, it will flow into everything. And it's quite dark, this one, but we'll, um, we'll do a few. And I'm just literally going to put a, a coat on everywhere at the moment. So the one trick I have learned from military modelling is that if you do different layers like this, do them with different solvents. So this is an enamel. If I now put another layer on top that's an acrylic, it won't shift the enamel. If I put a layer on top that's an oil, sometimes it will shift the enamel, to be honest, but not always, depending on what you do. So there we go. If I want to just make these um, a little bit sort of darker in some areas, and especially around the bit where the water's going to flow, because that is quite dark. If you shake this. Um, if you look at pictures where it is wet, it is definitely a lot darker. And we'll do that quite definitively, but also it might be where the um, soil builds up and that starts to bring a layer in. So this is black. Be warned, the dark is very dark. Um, it, you probably will only want to touch this onto an edge or something and just let it wick along. So I'm not going to do them all the same. So there's that one. Um, this one, I'm going to do it on the bottom of the actual culvert. So one of them, I'm going to have this as the, the concrete pipe, so it is going to be shown. There's going to be nothing else added to it. And then I might just on this one put a little dabble over here, just for a bit of variety. I'm just going to leave it to sort itself out. I do love the way they just merge into each other. So if I just put that like that, that like that, that like that, and that like that. You can probably see those. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just a little bit of, I think I might do the moss in the end. I'm gonna put a little bit of light sand on. This is quite yellow. It's a bit too yellow for um, concrete, which is still, yeah, I'm gonna have to dry brush something over here because I'm not totally happy yet. But I'm just gonna put a little bit running down on this one, just a bit of, variety. I think when things run in real life, they don't run like they do on wet on a model because they do it in a much larger scale. So I'm going to leave these before I spoil them to dry. So these are dried off overnight. I just think they're a bit dark. I think um, concrete is normally a bit lighter. I'm also going to um, put in the tubes. Now I made myself the little um, diorama stands for these to go on. And the reason I'm going to use these is, these are my tubes. I'll just bring these out. Um, they've been oops, sprayed black. I woke up this morning and thought, didn't turn the spray breathe fan off. So they've certainly been well vented overnight. And then I need to obviously um, plug the end at some point or it will end up with a lot of light shining through, which you don't want from your tubes. You want it to descend to darkness. So I want to do that. I want to colour these with a bit of colour, but I also want to start getting it on the pipe. So in one instance, I'm going to have it just sticking out slightly, like there was a metal pipe. So I'll do that on this one. There we go. So I've got my black pipe come through now, and I will glue that in place. So that's going to look a bit like an outlet pipe. And, mm -hmm. and then on this one, um, I'm going to actually just use this end, which is the 150 mil, to look like the um, pipe continues a little bit further. 
So I'm just going to have to glue that one in place. Um, this one, probably going to do the same actually, because looking at all the photos, it is, is a bit like concrete. And then the final one, I'm going to push this through and just have it sat inside. So you can see there's a, an extra pipe has been there or something, and it looks like it's concrete cast. So actually I think I'll do that on a couple, and then I'll have one glued behind. So now what I need to do is glue them. And like all good things, I'm probably going to use super glue or epoxy resin. And because I want these to set quite heavily, I'm going to epoxy re resin them because I don't think they'll have enough um, oomph behind them. And even if I put them on here, I'm worried that these will fall off. There's not a lot of surface area gluing in some instances. So this is Speed Epoxy by Deluxe Materials. I said before I do like Deluxe Materials and I bought quite small amounts because I find as they get older, they don't set as quickly. So this is four minutes, hopefully it will work um, quickly and it's equal volumes. So that's very good. And I'm just gonna put a blob on this side maybe a bit more because it's oozing out. So that's the red one and a blob on this side of a similar size. Hmm. Okay. So four minute epoxy. I've got a cocktail stick and a um, just a business card and I'm just going to mix it round. And I may need to do a second mix, which I will do if I need to. I don't like to over mix the amount because if it is four minute, then it's gone off. Um, so there we go. So here we go. Right. So the first one I'm going to do is this one. I'm going to make sure it's lined up on the front. So it's just where I want it to be. So this is looking like a concrete pipe that's been inset. And one of the reasons I want to do this, I'll just drop it on first actually, with speed epoxy is in some instances I think this might need a bit of um, holding. This one especially, oops, is um, as you can see, I'm not the neatest when it comes to gluing. I'm making sure it goes all the way around though. So there we go, there's that one mixed and in. And what I'm gonna do is just line it up at the front. And I want it to be level and it's tipping down as you might expect. So I'm just gonna twist it so that it's resting on the ground, that final, that other side, and that'll stop it falling. So there's that one just sat there. Okay. all set up looking really good next up is just covering the end so that we don't get any light leakage along the tunnel because let's face it water tunnels don't normally have much at the end next up I'm just going to deal with that color that I'm not quite happy with it's not quite light enough so I've got some I'm going to mix a few I've got some Vallejo white here I don't seem to have any Tamiya white obviously Never seem to buy it. And I've got some pale grey. Just want it to be a little bit lighter. I'm going to mix these two, which isn't great as they're separate little things, but there we go. So some pale and think, hmm, might be a bit too pale. But mm, I guess I could um, add a little bit of buff. So that was um, light grey XF66. This is Wooden deck tan. And I'm just going to put a splodge on, if that, just to give it a bit of, yeah, a bit of warmth to it. This concrete does pale over time. So what I'm going to do is take one of these and just literally 
dry this brush off in here so there's not much left. I'm just going to paint it on the back here till it's uh, and then I'm just literally just going to dry brush it a little bit lighter. And actually, if I look at this, it's too thick. So I often end up thinning my colours and then dry brushing the thinned amount. So there we go. Just gonna get that off my brush too. I did want to make sure there was no light leakage around. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Yeah, a bit better. So you can see that um, it's still got too much paint on the brush, so I'm just wiping it off again with my, my fingers. And um, I don't want to lose the pattern that's always there, so I'm tempted to do this mostly just on the, um, the tops, which are just a bit, a bit too dark. black getting all my colors out today and I just want to go around the inside edge of all of these to make sure there's no light leaks so I'm just going to paint around them and all this is doing is making sure that the um, the light doesn't leak through the pipe because if you think about it most pipes don't generally have light coming out of them at the end if you wanted to do it as an effect you very easily could and um, if you're doing culvert all the way through, it might like quite good. So back to the MIG washes, um, and I'll probably put another coat of the neutral on, because it is my favorite color. Um, and that's the unfinished, mostly finished one. So my aim now is to try and get these pipes to look like they've been here um, a long time as well and they sink in. Now this isn't as strong as I had it yesterday and I'm literally just going to dribble it round and just push it over. Let it run down. And it will dry lighter than it appears at the moment. Okay, so now I'm just going to mount these onto the um, these. One of them is a little bit longer. There we go, so they can fit. Oh no! Before I do that, then I just need to trim that off. Okay, so I'm going on like that. So they'll get mounted eventually onto my layout on these. So what I'm going to do now is just to finish off the dioramas is to say um, I need to just trim the bases to fit. So in this instance, I'm gonna put it here and I just want this to trail away a little. And this is the reason I use foam core. So that one's going on there. And what I'm gonna do is just peel the card off and carve a little bit out. From here. Yeah, not supposed to cut towards you. So now I've got a, a slightly more interesting diorama. So that's going to go there like that and that is going to go down and it eventually it'll merge in. So like all things, good old wodge of tacky glue in the middle to glue it into place. There we go. So Diorama number one. So here we are, end of the first week. And you can see I've got four culverts, all um, pointing in slightly different directions. They're all gonna sit into the backdrop on my layout and come down as streams. Um, this is um, equivalent to the, the hillside at the moment. So I've got the lovely little dioramas. I've got my rock work, my, my concrete, sorry. And they're all just first layer of patina and they're ready now 
for each of the individual treatments, which we'll do in the following few weeks. I guess it's nice she's doing something that's kind of like going to fit on her layout because all these other dioramas, they just sit on top of the fridge. I mean, this one, she's actually going to use. But this is my scale, okay? Me, this is my scale. Colbert's in HO. <sighs> I feel really chuffed that she's done my scale for us. She's always doing that O stuff. And that military stuff for like, Mill scale Catholic, that's just. I don't even have trains on that. <coughs> These are going to look awesome in place with a little river scene. I mean, they are. To be fair, she needs to do a bit of work on her layout, so it's a good step. This is a good step. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. I like them. Like them a lot. I think they've got grass next. I'll be a vast improvement too. Next week, Mill Scale Kathy has a sticky encounter. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode on how to sort of start off your culvert diorama. Next week, we're going to add grass so you get something a little bit more like this. Um, yeah. I think a little bit more exciting. And then after that, we'll be looking at individual culverts. So if you're enjoying it and you want to see how they turn out, subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Kathy Millett Modeling, or on my website, kathymillett.co.uk. See you next week.